for culture and uh, sassy of the municipality of Matera. We are now in the heart of the Asian city of Matera, talking about the relationship between restoration and ethics. How those terms can be applied to the town? First of all, good afternoon to everyone. Thanks for having us here. Uh, and welcome to all the delegations taking part in the restoration uh, week uh, in Matera. Uh, well, restoration and ethics uh, are very much connected. Um, people make the difference, really. Their pride, their awareness, their knowledge, know-how, and uh, most of all, their spirit of identity. I'll tell you a very short story about uh, my town. Um, Matea is the third... Uh, oldest town in the world, after Aleppo and Jericho, um, with um, cave dwellings dating back to the Paleolithic and Neolithic times, and since then, it has continually been uh, inhabited. Uh, it is called uh, Città dei Sassi, which are Italian words for city of stones. Sassi are these cave dwellings where people lived and still live now, now, now. Um, and um, they, they, the ancient part of the city of the town, which is where we are now, in the heart of the ancient um, area of the town, uh, were carved in the um, calcareous rock, which is surrounding us as well, and uh, uh, it is, uh, the, the ancient part was, uh, was uh, built, it, was, it grew up on the slope of a rocky ravine, which was created by a river, which doesn't exist anymore. Now it is replaced by a really uh, a very a very small uh, uh, stream, which is called uh, La Gravina. So I was saying that uh, people have always lived here, all together with animals, uh, one next to the other. And uh, Matea was built like uh, a ladder. There were streets which were on the roofs of the houses. There were cemeteries which were on the roofs of the houses. Uh, there was a famous uh, Italian author from northern Italy who said that uh, the dead are lying on the, on the living beings because cemeteries were sent up, because it is built like uh, really uh, a ladder, you know. What happened is that uh, uh, people lived here, uh, but there was a lot of uh, poverty, there were poor working conditions, poor sanitation, and, but there were, you know, there was the heart of the people living here. They loved living together. In 1948, uh, the head of the Communist Party, um, Togliatti, Palmiro Togliatti, called Matteo the shame of Italy. And a few, they, a few years after that, in 1952, uh, the Prime Minister de Gasperi decided to transfer most of the population to new areas of the town. So this could be the end of the story. This could have been the end of the story. It's a stop, you know. Uh, central government decides to transfer the population as well for safety reasons, for hygiene and so on. But uh, people have always lived here. And this is a... Um, a resilient city, a resilient town. People had their heart here. And uh, over, you know, throughout the, the decades, the last decades, people worked hard and turned the shame of Italy into the pride of Italy. Uh, with the, they made the Sassi, they made this uh, former shame of Italy a UNESCO World Heritage in 1993, the first site, the first UNESCO, UNESCO, UNESCO site in southern Italy. They turned it into the European capital of culture in 2019. So it's really the people that make the difference. Uh, today, Matea is something else. This is why restoration goes along with ethics, it goes along with people, necessarily. It, is, it has to be so. Uh, today, Matea is uh, uh, an amazing uh, natural scenery for the cinema, for example. It is also known as the underground city for the system of cisterns and uh, water collection. Uh, it, uh, it is a sustainable city. It is a green city. It is a technological city. So it's exactly something which goes into the opposite direction of what it was before. 
so this is why I think that uh, people make the difference, and ethics, pride, and spirit of identity of the people makes a difference. And that's what happened in Matera, that what uh, uh, changed completely the story of the town. So from the abandonment to the urban regeneration, from shame to pride, from horror to beauty, and I really hope that um, Matea can be uh, a symbol and an example uh, that can inspire, our story can inspire other stories like other people's and other towns and country stories can inspire us as well. Thank you. Thank you, Consuelo. Thank you, Tiziana. It's a really a very interesting story. So we are in the right, right place to talk about restoration and we are in the right place to talk about uh, ethics. So thank you. Thank you again. And uh, let's start with uh, the Restoration Week uh, 2021. 20, welcome to all of you, to the delegates. Welcome from the guests from uh, home to the last day, the last episode of uh, the Restoration Week 2021. Live events, uh, streaming, connection, dialogues around restoration, value, complexity and today we are talking about uh, ethics. Today we are inside, as the consular was saying, inside the Casa Cava, one of the Sassi of uh, Matera. We are in the middle of the Sasso uh, Barisano, the name of one of the areas of the Asian city. Differently from uh, other uh, Sassi, here we are in a quarry, a quarry of uh, tufa stone used for building the other buildings probably in earlier time than the Sassi. Now we are in a conference hall, a place for events, a place for live streamings, a place for international meetings, a place for theatrical performances and uh, concerts. So the heart of the new Matera, as the councillor was saying, from shame to pride. And we are very proud uh, to be here. Before starting, just uh, let me remind you to follow us on our social, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Please use the chat that you, fo that you find on our website, uh, www.restorationweek.it and the Salone del Restauro, to communicate with us and give us your opinion on what we are seeing and uh, um, discussing. Let me uh, introduce, first of all, last but not least, or better, last but the most important, the, a, spe a short speech from our uh, Undersecretary of uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and uh, International Cooperation, Mario Di Stefano, to introduce the main topic, the main reason why we are here, the Restoration Week, Restauro Made in Italy, discuss with the world about our capacity of uh, dealing with restoration. Thank you again. Thank you very Consella. much. Enjoy. Hello everyone. It's truly a pleasure for me to be able to send my greeting to this 2021 edition of Restoration Week. I also want to greet you on behalf of Minister Di Maio in order to show you the closeness of the Fernesina to this important flagship industry in our world. This is why the internationalization of cultural and creative industry in Italy is at the heart of the work of Fernesina. Particularly, I refer to the untiring events which are promoted abroad by our diplomatic and consulate network and the Italian Cultural Institutes. In these years, we have uh, carried out massive investments. Only for 2020, 15 million euros have been spent for the Fund for Integrated Promotion integrated in the law Cura Italia for more than 400 cultural products uh, taking place with the involvement of more than 700 professional creatives, artists and enterprises, plus the hundreds of initiatives both in person and virtual by the foreign network of the Farnesina. Italy has roots in its cultural and artistic heritage. These roots for us should project towards the future 
This is why we have ensured that we spread over various sectors so we can talk about Italian contemporary life with Fare Cinema, which is the cinema festival involving all the professionals in this seventh art in art itself with contemporary Italy, a series of four documentaries telling about the journeys through places and telling the stories of those who do art in Italy. Finally, one which is particularly promising in its uh, innovative format Italy land of wonders a video game in 11 languages with art culture and high technology which tells the beauty of Italy in an interactive and fun way please try it because it's truly exceptional from all points of view this is a made in Italy product in order to promote the excellence and Italian creativity in order to give continuity to the cultural offering some contents have been digitized others have been rethought with new languages online festivals uh, virtual worlds and campaigns on social media video games as I said earlier all actions and products which marry up culture and high technology all these novelties are now accessible on Italiana, the new portal of the Farnesina for the promotion of the language, culture and creativity of Italy in the world. This is, and I'm truly convinced, the correct way. Our budget has refunded the uh, fund for the promotion of Italian culture and language abroad with 32 a million euros in 2021, 47 in 2022, 51 in 2023. From that date, furthermore, the fund will be stabilized with 51 million euros every year. With this increasing and constant and then consistent amount, we wish to put petrol in the engine of this industry of excellence which has suffered the current situation. We know very well that in Italy, the link between our land and our culture has given a very rich creative industrial and cultural fabric based on quality and innovation and we wish to create a new narrative of Italy marrying up culture and innovation in four strategic sectors art and heritage cinema and audiovisual live events language and publishing here at the Farnesina we have collected the challenges of this time and tried to transform them into opportunities therefore enhancing the role of cultural promotion creating innovative digital products in order to relaunch the image of Italy in abroad and also investing in the growth of this humus so as to showcase internationally our skills in the context of restoring and preserving we have a long uh, tradition of excellence thanks to uh, institutes such as the Instituto Superiore for Conservation and Restoration the Opificio of Hardstones in uh, uh, Florence and Veneria Reale in Turin I would, there's another sector which is adjacent to that of restoration which is the Italian archaeological um, missions abroad in all continents sponsored by Maeci and only in 2021 210 took place these operations are uh, an admirable uh, example of our soft power because they give uh, value to the heritage of those countries creating a social economical basis where we can also strengthen our ties going back to restoration more and more often in foreign missions and in interfacing with my counterparts abroad i have the opportunity to talk about restoration as an example of excellence perhaps it's not known to the wider public in italy but this sector is very well known and respected by all those who deal with cultural heritage all over the world and it is for this reason that is more and more requested and more and more countries require and understand the need to give value to the archaeological architectonic and cultural uh, assets Italy is more and more well positioned to be a cultural superpower which is our true vocation due to our history and the amount of treasures we have Italy promotes the safeguard and preservation of the world heritage adhering to the UNESCO programs, specifically the Convention for the World Natural Heritage Safeguard adopted by the organization in 1972, which has set up the list of world cultural and natural heritage. Italy is the country with absolute primacy number of sites in the list, 58, 53 of which are cultural and five are natural. The last three have been added only a few days ago during the 44th session of the World Committee. Padova, Urbs, Picta, 
Scrovegni and uh, by Giotto uh, and the pictorial cycles of the 1300s, uh, Montecatini Terme, part of the spa towns of Europe and uh, the porticos in Bologna. This once again underline the enormous amount of treasures we have and it gives us the uh, incentive to safeguard more and more as uh, the unanimous decision proves of not including Venice in endangered uh, heritage sites, recognizing the work that Italy has done in preserving and restoring to its beauty the Lagoon City. Thanks again for all the help you are giving us, and I confirm once again how important this is as government and Farnesina we attribute to the sector of restoration, which is indispensable and as well as being a tool of international national relations for our country. I wish you profitable proceedings. So today we are in one of the most emblematic cities in Italy. We are talking about uh, ethics, uh, as we were saying with the councillor uh, this morning. Uh, ethic, it is very, the story that the councillor have tell, told us is really interesting and I think that can be taken as an example for every one of us, for every country present here and uh, the motto that the councillor have uh, stressed from, uh, pri from uh, blame to pride is uh, uh, or from shame to, to pride is really an interesting uh, story, a social story starting from the time needed for understanding how to recover, how to revitalize a place. Probably if uh, the Sassi would have been uh, an economical resource at the time of the expropriation, now we would have faced uh, something totally different. The abandon in that uh, time probably had given the opportunity to the municipality, to the professionals working in the restoration field and in the planning, to think about how to reuse or recreate a new city. Today we will uh, talk about different aspects uh, of this rev revitalization and, uh, but we want to also talk with our delighted guest uh, about comparison with uh, their own uh, countries. So we are, let's talk about uh, ethic and restoration with uh, His uh, Excellencies, uh, Mohamed Hamadzada, Ambassador of the uh, Republic of Azerbaijan in, uh, in Italy. Ambassador, after the liberation of the territories, the Republic of uh, Azerbaijan is facing a new challenge, a restoration of its cultural heritage, completely destroy is uh, a moral duty and uh, an identity of uh, your country uh, and will be, it is a part of the identity of uh, your country. Um, how can Italy as a strategic partner of uh, Azerbaijan be part of this process? <clears throat> First of all, I would like to say that Azerbaijan and Italy enjoy a strategic partnership, which is reconfirmed uh, with the signing of the joint declaration on strengthening of multidimensional strategic partnership during the state visit of the Repub President of the Republic of Azerbaijan last year to Italy. And uh, two countries uh, um, uh, enjoy excellent relations in political, economic and cultural sphere. Uh, as you mentioned, um, Azerbaijan, after 30 years, um, liberated its territories that uh, was uh, under the Armenian military occupation, and uh, in these territories, um, uh, Armenia destroyed and devastated uh, all uh, infrastructure of Azerbaijan, and including the uh, cultural heritage of Azerbaijan, and more than uh, one million uh, population uh, of Azerbaijan uh, was expelled from that uh, part of the country. And after 20 years, we liberated these territories and it, is, it, it, it offers new opportunities uh, for the development of the, uh, of, the, of the country. But at the same time, it creates new opportunities for the uh, deepening of the cooperation between Azerbaijan and Italy. Italy has always um, shown very just and objective position with regard to the 
uh, sovereignty of Azerbaijan and in all political uh, documents that we signed between two countries, uh, always Italy uh, expressed its respect to the sovereignty and in the territorial integrity uh, of Azerbaijan. And um, immediately after the uh, conclusion of the war, of the conflict, uh, under the Secretary of Foreign Affairs of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Italy, uh, Honorable Mario Di Stefano, he visited Azerbaijan, but not only capital city, at the same time he visited uh, one of one part of the liberated territories and he witnessed personally uh, the scale and the level of uh, this uh, territories, uh, the, the devastation of the territories of Azerbaijan. And during that visit, we uh, started to launch with Italy a very interesting plan of activity in order to uh, attract the Italian business, Italian investments, and Italian technology to the uh, to the uh, reconstruction uh, and the restoration of the liberated territories of, Azer of Azerbaijan. And we launched a number of uh, the missions with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Italy, and including the, uh, the respective uh, governmental authorities of Azerbaijan. And uh, one of the uh, web missions uh, was dedicated to the restoration of the uh, cultural monuments uh, of Azerbaijan. And we had very interesting uh, discussions and the exchange of views within that uh, web missions. And a number of Italian companies uh, were uh, presented to uh, Azerbaijani counterparts. And uh, today we are uh, with very prominent delegation from Azerbaijan in the uh, Restoration Week in Italy, and we have representative representation of the Minister of uh, Culture and the uh, um, representations from the Ichari Shehar, it's a historical architectural uh, monument of Azerbaijan. And uh, during this visit, we had very interesting um, presentations about the uh, new opportunities uh, of collaboration between two countries in the restoration sector and in particular in the liberated territories of Azerbaijan. And I don't want to take your time a lot because uh, I want that our delegation, our members of our delegation um, uh, um, can, can give more detailed information on all these opportunities. Thank you for mu very much for this opportunity. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Ambassador. Uh, of course, uh, Asolestaro is part of this promotion, of the, but will be a um, strong part of uh, the association promoting the relationship between the Italian companies and uh, the Azerbaijan institution, but we hope to create very strong partnership between our company, our experts, and your experts to do the best job we can on the restoration of culture and heritage. Thank you again. Thank you. Uh, let's now jump uh, back in time at uh, before the half of the last century. Uh, back in time when the story that the consular was uh, Tiziana was telling us uh, uh, at the very beginning. And uh, let's see how was the life uh, into the Sassi at the time. Casa Garotta. We are inside the historic cave dwelling of Vico Solitario. It's a typical dwelling, furnished, partly built and partly dug. The last family who lived in this structure is the family Viziello, composed of 11 people. The structure is characterized by uh, an architecture by elimination, meaning that we take away some material to give shape to the architectural structure. And with the material we've gathered, we used to build the barrel vault, which represented the first part of the house. Matera was mainly a society and an economy, uh, mainly agro-pastoral. So within the house, we can see all the tools which were used both to care for the animals and to live and to work. The main issue of these dwellings was the absence both of the water and the sewer systems. Within the dwellings, we can see a canalization system, and this is the reason why Matera was included in the UNESCO list, indeed, for the rainwater canalization systems. The rainwater was channeled in, within the tanks underneath the floor, and from the opening of the tank, people with the bucket could uh, take water.
The main issue of these structures was the fact that they had been dug, and therefore the rock, in this case the calcarinite, um, is as a matter of fact, like a, like a sponge, it absorbs the rainwater and releases gradually through humidity. So animals were very useful in the house because they used to warm up the space. Indeed, we can see here two stables. And here on my right, there was the dung heap because manure was kept for the first few days within the structures because by fermenting it released heat which uh, used to warm up the space which was very humid let's say that the issues which people had to face within these dwellings actually led in 1952 the then prime minister Alcide de Gasperi to approve a law of the Sassi expropriation this cave dwelling was reopened in 1977 so that the person living in Matera could remember that people used to live like this until the end of the 60s. We have uh, shifted to a time where the hygienic situation and the social life was uh, very complicated. And that's the beginning of the story. As uh, I was saying, sometimes time is necessary to face difficult uh, um, challenges uh, and uh, in that time the abandon of the Sassi have given this opportunity to think and rethink and study the future of, uh, of the city. Then in uh, 70 years we can say now we are proud to be in Matera and we are proud to be inside uh, the Sassi but today we are not only telling a story of uh, the city, but we are telling a story of uh, friendship between two different cities and the uh, delegation of uh, Azerbaijan is also here to testimony this uh, friendship uh, uh, between uh, Baku and uh, uh, Matera. Riyad Gazimov, head of uh, the administration of the Hisharisha Her, historical and architectural reserve. We have uh, open the um, this show with uh, uh, the councillor talking about uh, ethic in uh, materica an ethical story uh isha isha her has signed an mou with uh, with materia can you tell me tell us something about the similarities between the two cities the two towns uh thank you very much uh, andrea and thank you uh, very much uh, i would like to express my gratitude first of all to all the organizers of this wonderful week we are spending a very interesting time and learning a lot from our colleagues uh, here in Italy. Uh, of course, you mentioned uh, from the very beginning that uh, Shahar, the old city of Baku and Matera, uh, have differences. But I would like, uh, I'm here for the first time, and I would like to stress out that although there are, of course, some different differences from a cultural point of view, but uh, there are also a lot of similarities, which I can see here. And uh, this is exactly um, uh, the place where we can learn a, learn a lot uh, as uh, representatives of Ichar to preserve, preserve and to develop the old city of Baku. Uh, the old city of Baku is uh, the very heart of uh, the capital of Azerbaijan and uh, it was uh, consisted uh, in the medieval times uh, only uh, of uh, Ichar Shahar. And uh, you've uh, mentioned this uh, great opportunity we had with this memorandum we had with uh, uh, Matera, our Matera colleagues, which we had a very fruitful meeting today. And uh, I would like to uh, uh, make sure that uh, we uh, agreed on a very interesting project, which will allow uh, uh, both to our Italian colleagues, our Italian friends here, and to Azerbaijani part, to benefit from uh, each other. Uh, so coming back to the ethics, um, I would like to stress out also that uh, the similarity of uh, Ishari Shahar and Matera, as I can see, is that both of them still, being very ancient cities, are uh, well populated. Uh, Ishari Shahar has uh, more than 4,000 uh, inhabitants uh, to the moment, and it was uh, one of the most important decisions of the government of Azerbaijan, uh, which uh, uh, made a decision to uh, keep it as a living city, 
uh, not to uh, capsule it, not to close it, but to make it vibrant city with its own rules, with its own development, and etc. And I can say that my Azerbaijani colleagues know, and I think that the colleagues which have been to Azerbaijan from Italia, uh, they know that uh, the inhabitants of Ichaishahar, of the old city of Baku, have their own rules, have their own traditions, uh, which are sometimes uh, quite, uh, can be quite different from the other sides of Baku, being the city within the city. So coming to these ethic norms, one of the most important issues for the administration uh, of Ishar uh, was to keep these traditions, uh, to make uh, the inhabitants of this city feel uh, that they are comfortable even with uh, the uh, fast developing world, which is outside the city walls. And uh, uh, I think we've succeeded in that. And uh, this success story is uh, actually uh, what brought us to the point when we are one of the most prominent uh, uh, success models in the UNESCO World Heritage List because there is a, a model of management with the administration, with the specific administration, which is combining several uh, uh, competences of different state uh, entities in itself. Uh, is uh, quite an exclusive uh, mechanism, uh, which is uh, currently uh, being uh, promoted by several UNESCO World Heritage uh, uh, cities. So, um, coming to that, uh, to the uh, ethics point, of course, it is very important for us to preserve not only the monuments of Richard Shire, which is more than 500 of them uh, on 22 hectares territory, uh, but also to preserve uh, the ambience the vibe of Ichari Shahar, which is the most important thing, which you feel right away when you come inside the city walls and you, see, uh, you start to feel it. And it's uh, a wonderful opportunity to get back in time. So uh, I would like to once again uh, thank uh, our Italian colleagues, Italian friends, for this wonderful opportunity uh, which guided us all here. And I'm sure that uh, uh, our mutual cooperation will go on, both with uh, our colleagues from the Italian Trade Agency, Anna Saristaro, and also with our dear friends and colleagues from uh, uh, Mater City Council. Thank you, Riyad. For sure, we have uh, today connected uh, the, whole, the three words that we have used uh, during this uh, week, complexity. Matera and Baku are complex city and complex uh, social context value because both are values of history of, of our global uh, identity and ethic because both are ethical stories. So what are the next steps uh, in the process of restoration but valorization of the old city of Baku? Uh, this is a very important point uh, uh, you mentioned. Of course, uh, as an administration, we always have ongoing restoration works. Uh, we started uh, 10, 12 years ago uh, as an entity with uh, restoration of the uh, most well-known uh, monuments of Azerbaijan and Baku. Uh, it was the Maiden Tower and the complex of uh, Sherwan Shah Palace, uh, which are inscribed in the World Heritage List as well. Uh, and we had a very uh, success story of a uh, very good success story of cooperation with our European colleagues and European experts, which were brought to uh, uh, so that our local experts also can gain the uh, uh, enough experience uh, on the modern technologies. So, uh, coming to the uh, uh, projects which uh, are currently in our pipeline. Uh, we've just recently finished the uh, project of uh, 17th century Baku Khan's palace, uh, in which was completely uh, regenerated and restored. And uh, we are planning to, uh, we are now currently finalizing the uh, establishment of the uh, wonderful museum expo exposition there, which uh, will be one of its kind uh, in the region. Uh, which will uh, bring us having the technologies to one day in the medieval Baku. So it's going to be a wonderful experience for all the guests and also the uh, inhabitants of uh, citizens of Azerbaijan to see that. Uh, the other important uh, project for us is uh, the uh, city walls. Uh, we have uh, more than 1,000 meters of city walls, uh, which are still intact, and we are fragmentarily uh, restoring them. Uh, uh, and. Uh, 
Uh, we are currently looking at approximately 900 meters of them, which uh, we're planning to restore in the upcoming years. Uh, it's a very pr uh, promising project because, and it's a very important project because it's actually uh, what uh, differs and what uh, borders Ishari Shahar from the, uh, the, the, the other part of Baku, the modern Baku. So, uh, therefore, it is very important for us to preserve it since they were not uh, restored uh, for the last eight, almost eight years uh, since the Soviet period. Uh, so, these are the projects which we are working on currently. We also have two uh, projects with uh, restoration of uh, 17th century uh, caravansaray. We also recently uh, found, uh, uh, during the archaeological excavation, uh, the uh, hammam, the bathhouse of 17th century, which was one of the most significant findings in uh, re recent history of Shah. So uh, these are uh, very briefly about our uh, plans. Thank, thank you very much, Riyad. We are, of course, uh, ready to be part of your uh, challenges and of your revitalization of the city. Thank you very much. We, but not only the Italians uh, the, from Asso and Matera, but I think all our colleagues from all over the world that have joined uh, us today in, in this week in, in Italy. So thank you. Thank you again. So, uh, in, in the words of uh, Riyadh, there was another important aspect, the evolution in time of a so Asian city, not only the recent one. So, uh, for example, Matera is not only the Sassi, but it has evolved in the previous uh, era. And uh, we are going to look at uh, an architectural complex, a very important architectural complex inside the old city, but far away from the, the, the Sassi, very distant from the Sassi. Not in, calculated in meters, uh, but calculated for the social life of uh, the city. Now it is uh, one of the most important uh, museums of uh, the city, Palazzo Lanfranchi. We are in the beautiful cloister of Lanfranchi Palace, and I'm going to tell you briefly the history. The original center of the palace dates back to 1608, and is uh, composed of the Church of Carmine and the uh, annexed um, seminary of the Carmelites. The palace itself is born as a seminary in 1668, thanks to the Archbishop Vincenzo Lanfranchi, who, following the uh, indications of the Council of Trent, gave the town of Matera, its own seminar. On the facade of the palace, there is also the uh, front of the Chiesa del Carmine. The palace is distributed on the north-south axis and within contains, uh, as a cornerstone, the cloister we see behind me. The first important extension of the palace is the one that we find to the west and which was done during the first decades of the 18th century. The second extension uh, given the need to have a higher number of seminaries was the one done during the 19th century and which extended the palace further towards the south, towards the current terrace. The palace, the building itself, is a layered building with different functions and different um, building phases and the palace itself has been a seminar, a classical high school and it has also become the national Museum of Modern Medieval Art in 2003, whereas today is the National Museum of Matera. La Franchi Palace is undergoing uh, uh, development and restoration uh, action so that the museum can be modern, accessible and inclusive and also a multimedia museum. The project uh, in, will uh, cover the facade, the terrace, the museum and the systems. We are on the terrace right now. The works have started on the 26th of March. We have started treating indeed the stone itself, trying to find, identify the best possible materials on the chemical and physical uh, front. We have started cleaning with high pressure cleaner and with the biocides and we uh, cleaned the stones which were extremely deteriorated. 
We have also treated the gaps because the terraces had undergone many fractures in different points and they were missing pieces because in, during winter when the temperatures are low, there are those fractures on the stones. And so over time, there's been a wear and tear on the terraces, terrace, and there's been more and more gaps. We've always tried to use the best possible material. And so choosing mortar has been important because in a restoration building site, the mortar is fundamental and it's a crucial uh, choice for the team working at the restoration because restoration is not possible without mortar. The transition from uh, the ancient use uh, at the time uh, uh, a noble palace, a residential palace, to a new use uh, is now part uh, and mandatory of the activities of uh, the organization who are managing uh, cultural heritage and uh, one of the main goal of all the experts that are working in this uh, uh, sector. Klesta Cirizzi, advisor of the Minister of Culture of the Republic of uh, Albania. Uh, what is the actual policy of the Ministry of Culture about the cultural heritage and cultural tourism in uh, Albania? Thank you, Andrea. And um, it's a pleasure for me to be here and to discuss about Albania and cultural heritage in Albania. Albania is a country of eternal beauty. In our territory, we count a considerable number of monuments. And this is a big uh, fact, a, a beautiful fact, but a big uh, challenge for the Ministry of Culture. Uh, in the recent years, uh, referring to the most important uh, examples of the countries like Italy, uh, we have improved our approach uh, for the cultural heritage uh, by uh, providing um, programs for uh, cultural heritage and for uh, conservation of uh, historical centers, monuments uh, in the cities like uh, Vlora, Jorgastra, and Girana, which are very important cities in Albania. Uh, two years ago, Albania was hit by a deadly earthquake, which has affected uh, the life of Albania in many aspects. One of that was a uh, cultural heritage field. And for the Minister of Culture, the um, priority was to manage the situation. And now we are working very hard for the conservation and revitalization of all the monuments that are affected by this earthquake. A program like uh, Youth for Culture, which is a program financed by uh, European Union and other uh, programs uh, by the other donations are supporting Ministry of Culture uh, to achieve this purpose. Um, going through the difficult situation uh, of the COVID period, we understood that we have to find the innovative solution uh, for the exhibitions and for promotion of the cultural heritage. So we are working to find and to um, to, to innovate uh, the exhibition line uh, of the museums of cultural heritage in uh, Albania. This will be possible through digitalization and uh, through contemporary technology. Uh, our focus is in the management plan and uh, business plan in order to have a sustainable development of cultural heritage in Albania. We are working with our in-house specialists and experts and we are working forward to, to collaborate with uh, external uh, experts. So during this restoration week, we have mentioned several times the need of uh, education and training in uh, uh, restoration. Of course, the exchange of expertise is the focus of our um, restoration week and of, of our collaboration. Uh, I know that uh, the Ministry of Culture of Albania is planning to start uh, a school uh, a program in education and restoration, also in cooperation uh, with Italy. Can you tell us something more about that? Uh, yes, uh, a core element of, for the vision of the Minister of Culture is to be focused on the young professionals. Regarding this, we are preparing a um, program for the regional um, center for conservation and restoration. Uh, this will be what we call Scuola Cantiere, and it will be a model referring to Italian uh, Instituto di Restauro, 
so it will be a center um, dedicated to the young professionists and they will provide uh, a training and specialization in the cultural heritage. Uh, this, uh, as I said, this will be possible through digitalization and contemporary technology, but in this way the young professionists will be part, uh, uh, actively uh, part of the um, cultural heritage in Albania. Thank you very much. Uh, as you mentioned, the uh, pilot worksite or Cantiere Scuola, as you correctly say in Italian, thank you very much, are the focus of all the activities that Asso Restaro is promoting abroad also with uh, the Italian trade uh, agency because that's the way of knowing each other and start to cooperate on uh, the field of expertise that everyone has in the field of uh, restoration. Thank you again. Um, let's stay now into the Palazzo Lanfranchi and uh, let's see a short, a little uh, Cantiere Scuola, a short piece of uh, restoration in Palazzo Lanfranchi. I am uh, plastering these degraded areas in the rock. This is a local rock called uh, calcite limestone, Volk, uh, normally called uh, with the vulgar name of tufa, which is characteristic here in Matera. And the plaster is made of uh, hydraulic lime and local inert material. There, the plastering will take place wherever a degradation is visible in the rock and the joints will be uh, addressed as well. These are the joints between the two uh, blocks. The uh, legacy mortar will be partly removed, whereas those which are of interest from a point of view of preservation and which are in good condition will be kept and supported through this new plaster. Let's now make uh, another little jump, not in time this time, but in the, on the opposite side of the Mediterranean Sea, again in uh, Lebanon. We are with uh, Sarki Skuri, director of the DGA, the General Directorate of Antiquities of uh, Lebanon. We have, uh, talk, we have had the opportunity to meet your colleagues here in Italy and talk about the situation that you are facing, that you, that you have faced in uh, Beirut due to the blast of the 4th of uh, uh, August 2020. But uh, uh, this is not, uh, Lebanon is not only Beirut, Lebanon has a very rich history and uh, a very rich history of archaeological site that you are restoring and valorizing. What's in general the program of restoration of your DGA in Lebanon now? Thank you, Andrea, for inviting me to this prestigious place full of history. Uh, of course, uh, Lebanon is responsible, the DGA in Lebanon is responsible of protecting and safeguarding all the historical sites in Lebanon. Uh, we have uh, three departments, the Department of Archaeology, the Department of Built Heritage, and the Department of Movable Heritage and Museums. So, uh, uh, the Lebanon has undertaken uh, a five-year strategy to restore all the cultural sites in Lebanon. Unfortunately, uh, due to the crisis uh, of economic crisis in Lebanon, and uh, COVID-19 and the force of death, uh, uh, this uh, uh, strategic plan will take more than five years. But actually, we have a lot of project, restoration projects that we are uh, undertaking now. Uh, and I would like to uh, talk about uh, the restoration of uh, Balbak that we are uh, uh, making with the uh, help of the Italian Corporation in Lebanon, uh, the basement of the National Museum of Beirut, also with the uh, Italian donation, and uh, the restoration of the uh, archaeological site of Tyre. All the sites uh, are in World Heritage Site. Lebanon is a very small country, 10,000 square, square kilometers, but we have five World Heritage Sites. 
Kadisha Valley, Tyr site, Biblos, Balbak, and Anjar. And we have 10 of the tentative list. And I invite you all to visit Lama. Thank you. Uh, so this, well, we, while we are speaking, we were seeing at the time lapse of uh, the restoration of the Jupiter Temple in, uh, in, in Barbeck, an extraordinary work uh, due together with uh, some Italian experts uh, and some Italian uh, companies. We, we know each other since a long time, and yeah. Lebanon and Italy has started to cooperate in the field of restoration since uh, uh, a long time. I, I would like to come back to the idea of creating, uh, um, to, to strengthen the educational in uh, uh, restoration. So I know that Italy and Lebanon are planning to start with a center for restoration in uh, Biblos. We cannot anticipate too much, but just few words on uh, that future program that we have together, and I hope it will start very soon. The Director General of Antiquities has inaugurated uh, uh, the Center of Restoration and Conservation of Lebanese Heritage in Biblos. Uh, Biblos, of course, is uh, old uh, like Matera here, so uh, it, uh, where uh, Alphabet was created. So uh, uh, we are keen to have uh, a main partner like Italy in this project uh, so we can exchange experience and especially uh, we, we have a lot of common heritage and, uh, between our two countries. Okay, thank you very much. We have uh, had the opportunity to talk about the Ready Center in Cuba uh, that will be inaugurated very soon, but I'm very glad that it has a first spin-off probably in uh, Lebanon in a very short time because the meeting that we are having during this Restoration Week are also aiming to strengthen our cooperation and make future planning. So thank you very thank much you. Thank you. and uh, thank you for having bringing us into an uh, archaeological uh, context. So as the councillor was saying at the beginning, we are now making another jump, but not so far, just uh, on the other side uh, of, uh, uh, of the Gravina, the, the valley dividing uh, uh, Matera from uh, the origins of Matera, the ancient Matera in the Neolithical ages, but also in, uh, for the um, Ruprestrian uh, churches. So let's see some, uh, an introduction, an overview on that part, and, so then, and then we will go deep into the restoration of the churches. This is the high carbonate plain on Murja Timone. This is a hill overlooking the city of Matera. It's very important because over the last millennia, it has recorded the dwelling history of this area, starting from the 6th millennium before Christ to the 8th century before Christ for Neolithic uh, dwellings, which are located in the most internal part of this hill and then in the 8th to the 11th century AD witnessed by uh, a great distribution of cave churches which we will see also in the western sector of this hill. The plain is uh, structured around a carbonate uh, lime rock base which have uh, developed in uh, what is called Calcare di Altamura, limestone of Altamura, and on this uh, uh, we find around 20 uh, meters of calcite limestone on which, due to the intervention of humans, uh, excavation has taken place, including uh, cave dwellings and trenches in the internal part. 
this landscape we observe around us is uh, one which has developed especially thanks to the action of water. Water has had an impact and determined a widening of these valleys, which we call in Italian gravina. They have hosted on uh, the uh, rocks and on the rock faces the positioning of these cave churches. These were uh, dug out of calcite uh, limestone, which is made up of two elements, one which is easy uh, to dig out and another one which is more contact. The phenomenon of the Rupestrian buildings has a peculiarity which the area of Matera, where we are now, shares with uh, mainly the Mediterranean basins from southern Italy, Puglia, Sicily, Calabria, and all the way to Cappadocia. Right now, we are standing in front of the uh, San Falcione crypt in Murgia Timone, indeed close to Matera, and this is one of those places, together with others like Madonna delle Tre Porte, Madonna delle Croci, or the uh, Rupestrian Church of Sant'Agnese, that uh, in a way benefited from recent rescues thanks to a, a good restoration operation which revealed the peculiarities and expanding our knowledge concerning the Rupestrian churches of Basilicata and especially of the area of Matera. Those peculiarities have an impact, both the archaeological forms which are used and which show on the one side the knowledge of Asian models and on the other the adaptation of these models to local needs, which could be geological needs but also uh, functional uh, religious needs. The uh, Rupestrian buildings, even the sacred one, are not uh, uh, always the same over time. They are modified often by local people, and this sometimes has compromised the conservation status of these buildings, but that today, luckily, we are trying to recover. This is the church of San Falcione, where restoration has uh, taken place. This is consolidation and bringing to light the entire uh, heritage of the church, and we can note how the frescoes have been consolidated. As well as the cleaning work, we have seen a careful consolidation of uh, all the uh, uh, mortar and uh, the plastering through the closing of fissures of the introdox and extradox. The fissures you see above have been uh, uh, supported with strengthened perforations in order to consolidate and continue to keep the rock face as compact as possible. We have entered in a totally different uh, point of view, uh, recover a uh, rebirth of uh, a delicate, a very delicate uh, ecosystem. Uh, people working on restoration don't like easy things, that's uh, a matter of fact. We, we, we know we are working in that field and we know it uh, uh, perfectly. I want to make a short jump uh, again in the Mediterranean Sea, but in that case uh, in a, in, a, in a closer way, always uh, in Italy, but with some uh, similarity in at least uh, in uh, uh, logistic. So, if you can see the, um, the video, uh, San Fruttuoso, we are, uh, uh, you can probably remember some of these uh, images. Uh, uh, from the promotional uh, video of uh, the, made, the Made in Italy. Uh, Magistri, one of our members, have made uh, this uh, important restoration in, uh, in a building, in a complex protected by the FAI, Fondo Ambiente uh, Italiano. Uh, we are on the coast of uh, um, Liguria, we are in uh, the middle of uh, a bay, you can reach the bay only on foot, by a mountain trail, or on a boat through uh, the sea. So, uh, really difficult to be managed in a, a place that is really, really fascinating as 
where we are now. Of course, uh, all the part of the restoration, the facade, the scaffolding have aimed not only to preserve the building, but also to enhance his capability of being part of the local uh, economy and uh, of the touristical uh, offer uh, of the region uh, Liguria. Not only the shores, but also our cultural treasures. And as you can see from the video, of course, uh, the delicate activities of the restorers, uh, new bricks, uh, structural consolidation, uh, surface uh, restoration, the roof, we need to repair the roof in order to keep the building safe and then as it happened in archaeological sites with very precious artifacts the hands of the restorer are the secret for a successful uh, restoration with also some curious animal coming to see the activities of uh, of the restorers so fascinating and difficult like uh, as restorers uh, like to be, of course, with uh, technologies that can help uh, to reach the goal that we are facing and the uh, strict, uh, always the strict control of uh, well-educated architects, uh, the worksite manager and uh, the superintendency, always keeping an eye, controlling and approving the restoration project. We can see that the secret uh, of the history of Italy is due to the fact we, that we have been able to list and control our heritage and keep it as it is as part of our as part of our history. Let me come back uh, um, to Matera and uh, we will see some other restoration, important restoration in other three churches: Sant'Agnese, Madonna delle Tre Porte, and uh, San Vito. Let's see the video. This is the Cave Church Madonna delle Tre Porte, where restoration and consolidation has taken place. The narthex has been restored in anastylosis through the uh, refixing of rocks which have been uh, found on the ground and abandoned and brought back to the top. We have rebuilt the entrance of the old church. After this, we rebuilt the uh, pillar, which we can uh, notice here through new blocks, quarry blocks, which were recovered on site and reassembled in order to give new uh, support to the uh, exterodoxes of the church. The second work which uh, took place here was the installation of new frames in court and steel in order to guarantee controlled access to the church itself but also fundamental for a control of ultraviolet light and wind in order to protect and preserve the church itself but also these wonderful frescoes which qualify the site we also find them in the apse here but especially inside in the most hidden portion of the church this uh, fundamental theme for us was that of guaranteeing a new uh, accessibility to all uh, cave churches in the Murja of uh, area of Matera. We are in the church of Sant'Agnese. Here we can find many mural paintings which have been painted directly on the substrate of the uh, stone. The most important one of this church is the iconography of Sant'Agnese because this painting before the restoration had been repainted in the 17th century and this repainting has been taken off so that the real dress of Sant'Agnese from the Byzantine period could come out. The uh, deterioration factors of this church are deterioration factors mainly linked to aerosols, so people visiting the church 
and uh, by breathing producing um, CO2 and also the microorganisms which are uh, present naturally in the stone itself. This is the cave church of St. Vito in Murgia. This is one of the most spectacular churches looking down on the rock face against the city of Matera. And here our work has been about architectural restoration and especially consolidation of the tufa base. This uh, work was also about the uh, surviving frescoes and during the cleaning phase quite crucial traces have come to light which have allowed us to rebuild the face of some saints represented here. Another fundamental uh, job was the uh, placing the insulation of uh, caught and steel gates allowing the regulation of entry to the church itself. overview of the Gravina, but now from the Gravina of Matera, again let me come back to Azerbaijan, Azad Jafarli, uh, head of the State Service for Protection, Development and Restoration of Cultural Heritage under the Ministry of Culture of the Republic of uh, Azerbaijan. Today we are talking about uh, ethics, we have talked about ethics also with the ambassador and uh, we have talked about ethics here in, in, uh, uh, in Matera. The rule of restoration of the historical um, heritage in the resettlements of the EDPs in those liberated areas in uh, Azerbaijan. What can this rule, important rule of restoration? Well, thank you. I should start from the broad notion of the restoration. Restoration does not mean only the regenerating the simple buildings that are monumental for the history of a given nation. It's about reviving the old traditions of our ancestors. It's about reviving their philosophy of the life, their mode of the life, the habits that they have uh, crystallized in these buildings and these architectural but also ecological buildings. So in that sense, you know, to bring people back, those IDPs, into those liberated areas, first and foremost, we need to bring back their damaged identity because uh, cultural pr properties and cultural heritage is about the identity of a given nation. And Azerbaijani people now want to go back with their identity, with full respect to their human rights into those liberated areas. For the last 30 years, these areas have been under the occupation and unfortunately we have registered hundreds of numbers of examples when the monuments have been either severely damaged or completely destructed. But we are full of the energy and full of enthusiasm and very decisive uh, to bring back those monuments. And happily to mention, last year in November, finally we got the agreement, we signed an agreement, and this very trilateral agreement was the very, very milestone in uh, post-conflict era. Now we are in post-conflict uh, time, and we are talking about how to bring back to these liberated areas, by the way, equal in size to the whole uh, Lebanon. We had a colleague from uh, Lebanon, uh, how to make it in a way that they are prosperously could live there and get their much deserved life. Uh, last year, when the, the conflict was already over, uh, the head of the state of Azerbaijan announced about the great return. And the very milestone in this great return is about the, uh, the return of the culture. It's about the restoration of the samples of the cultural uh, heritage and to make them in a way that, again, they illustrate very century-old or the millennium-old history, the philosophy, the very uh, standpoint and enthusiasm of our ancestors. By the way, we're in the context of the of very rich area, the region, which enjoys and hosts over 2,600 monuments, out of which 706 are in the registry, and many of them are of the world significance. Just to mention some, we have Dazir Cave, like the caves here in Matera, uh, which dates back to 350, 400,000 years, with some remainings of the Paleolithic Neanderthal dating back to 1.5 million years. We have the bridge of the 10th century, so they are about 
uh, thousands of years. Uh, they are the castles and also the fortresses going back to the 16th and 13th centuries, tombs of the 12th and 13th centuries. So we are very cognizant of the fact that the settlement of Aitupis should start with the resettlement of their culture, of their cultural identity, and through the restoration of the, uh, the samples of the cultural heritage. And here I have to mention that, uh, yes, the restoration of, the, of these old samples of the cultural heritage is also the very, very important element that creates the conditions conducive to the sustainable development. It's not only about hardware, it's about the software that links up our life to the material part of, the, of our day-by-day -day activities. And in the same way, in the government of Azerbaijan last year, together with the uh, UN Office for the Alliance of Civilizations, initiated the campaign Peace for Culture. Today, we realize, never before, even much more than others, that if we need to develop, deepen, and generate the culture for the newcomers, for the next generations, and we wanted to survive it as it is, then we need to start with the peace. Peace that combines everybody, peace that will certainly make each and every IDP proud of their life, and to get the label of IDP, to be the really well-deserved inhabitants of these areas. Thank you very much. So today, ethics seems to be really the key word to be used. So, and we started today talking about proudness. So we have to be very proud when we are using small brushing to restore stones. We are also trying to restore souls. And when we are the new, using the new technologies for our restoration, the valorization of our sites, we are also working for connecting people to their origin. And that's very, 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 very important. But just to jump to a, a little more technical uh, uh, approach to restoration. Uh, what are the takeouts from the restoration week that can be useful in our future cooperation in Azerbaijan? Well, let me thank first and foremost our Italian colleagues, uh, Italian trade agency and other partnering organizations and those from the non-governmental sector for organizing this event. This where really uh, combined different people with a different background, the representatives of this science research and also practical side. So it demonstrated how the synergies of all these actions could be synchronized under the same title and they can serve the best interests of the peace, prosperity, but also the, uh, the friend friendliness. And I think uh, we also understood, and this is the, the most important takeaway, at least for my delegation, for myself personally, that there are the many rooms to work together and there is a very big advantage how we can learn from each other uh, in the format of the two-way street, how we can really uh, be very, very happy for the success of one side for the sakes of its very good, uh, I would say, semantics in the context of other cities. And therefore, when I listen to my colleagues from Materia, but also Icharu Shahar of Baku, Azerbaijan, I admired that this is also the kind of an exemplary uh, the cooperation and also collaboration that turned to be the friendship, that they can uh, make the one success in the one region the very foundation for the success of another. And I'm more than sure that this type of the examples, either bilateral or trilateral cooperation models, will be elaborated by other colleagues that were together with us during this fair. And again, this was a very, very great opportunity to listen to each other, to understand each other, but also to see that we are all capable once we're together once we really appreciate what we do in different corners of the world, uh, which in terms of the technologies might be different, but we all follow the same purpose. Yeah, you have used two very important uh, sentences, learn from each other and talk to each other. So now we are talking to experts of restoration all over the world, promoted by the network of the Italian embassies in the world, but we are also talking to uh, history lovers or uh, lovers of architecture, so to share our ideas and uh, the rule of, uh, of uh, restoration. So thank you, thank you very much again, and we are staying in uh, um, an archaeological context, and we are 
uh, also talking about valorization of an area that have been in some way abandoned to the real life for a, a lot of time, uh, used as a field for the animals and uh, always almost unknown by even the citizens of, uh, of uh, Matera. Yatsu Gattini is uh, a rural complex used for animal, uh, for the rural life. Now it's uh, the house of uh, the digital use of uh, the local surrounding, the archaeological park, to visit also the life at the time, but uh, also the archaeological areas of uh, Matea. Let's see the video. Thanks. This is uh, Yatsugattini, this is a magical place of the Murja highlands. This is an area which is crucial because it has seen the human presence for 8,000 years. The choice of the Park of the History of Man project is a happy initiative of the municipal authority which has allowed us to trace four themes starting from the Neolithic with the uh, Murja prehistory park with the uh, rock uh, civilization, uh, farming uh, community, and the city of stars. This initiative was very important because it allowed us to uh, share with our visitors this space, which is of crucial importance in order to understand the history of man from Neolithic to today. We have seen the recovery of seven uh, rock churches connected by a millennia-old path. The farming uh, society project will be may be made taking place in the Sassi area, in one of the Sassi areas, which is particularly degraded. The third, instead, is the part of the history of man prehistory was uh, created in a very linear way to make it accessible and visitable. This is a trench protected Neolithic village. The fourth is the city of stars where a planetarium will come about and this will allow visitors to understand that Matera is looking to the future but towards the study of the stars thanks to the EU Italian Space Agency. This is a, a new perspective, uh, a new point uh, uh, of view. From the Yazzo Gattini, uh, the visit of the surrounding area are starting with a new perspective and new possibilities. Uh, into uh, travel, into time, into to uh, Neolithic uh, village on a new walkway, flying over the remainings and giving the opportunity to look at the remainings and save the nature and uh, the relics. Uh, nothing obligatory, but a suggested uh, path to visit uh, this uh, very interesting uh, archaeological area. So, let's see the Neolithic village surrounded by an ancestral defensive uh, system, but just before going into the Neolithic village in, uh, in, uh, in Matera, uh, I wanted to uh, just talk about an important uh, work that one of our members have done a few years ago in, uh, in uh, Afghanistan, just uh, as a symbol of uh, friendship uh, in uh, this situation. Uh, in Afghanistan, uh, one of our members, uh, uh, Joe Gra, have been asked within a UNESCO a project to make uh, a survey of the state of conservation of one of the UNESCO sites uh, in uh, Afghanistan. So what we are seeing now is uh, the rough point cloud of uh, the survey of uh, an entire um, hill precisely in uh, the province of uh, Bamin. We are in the valley of uh, Buddha where they worked uh, on geometrical survey uh, on, uh, of the Shar Egol Gola, an archaeological site made of uh, clay put in dangers by 
the various fights of the area, so the UNESCO decided to understand how was the state of conservation to start uh, a restoration and the valorization, starting to enhance the capacity of the, the country of attracting people for its cultural uh, heritage. And that's the secret we are discussing since now with all our country country partner countries uh, and uh, now we are going uh, more and more into the 3D survey of uh, the area, a photogrammetrical survey united with the laser scanner survey meshed together to recreate the exact situation of uh, the area uh, at the moment of uh, the survey. Uh, a document for the archives, a document for starting the restoration process, for starting to go deep into more detailed analysis, aiming at using these sites for uh, the new uh, Afghanistan. We will see now what uh, uh, will uh, happen. So, com coming back to the, um, to the Villaggio Trincerato, we are coming back uh, uh, to Matera and uh, let's see the video of the Villaggio Trincerato and let's, vi vi and let's visit together the Villaggio Trincerato. The plain of Murcia Timone is uh, a millennia old site and thanks to the work taking place in this project where we aim to give value uh, to the park of the history of man, these traces are certainly more visible and easier to see on the part of everyone. Also, thanks to a guided simplified itinerary with uh, appropriate signposting and uh, explanatory panels. We are roughly around the middle of the 6th millennium before Christ and this plain of Morgetimone is occupied at this time by an extended uh, trenched village which is surrounded by a double system of ditches. The double ditches uh, encloses an area of around 25,000 square meters within which the archaeological investigations allowed to identify traces of dwellings represented mainly by holes for poles, cisterns and channels in order to uh, channel the water. Aside from the defensive action, it is very possible that the Neolithic trenches are used as protected and safe spaces for uh, productive and artisan activities. Starting from the Bronze Age, the main dwelling element is represented by monumental tombs dug directly in the base rock and identified in the surface, surface sometimes also through circuits, circles of great uh, rocks which made these tombs visible in the surface. We are within tomb number two, and this is one of the tombs which are being restored. In particular, in this uh, tomb, we um, intervened by cleaning and reinforcing. The main issues of all the tombs were mainly due to the um, lack of maintenance of the sites and therefore we could see a consistent biological attack. There were weeds especially on the external part of the tombs. 
We therefore decided to treat with biocides, obviously following a preliminary tests to try and identify the products which could best solve those issues. In this case, the priority was given to the environmental impact because we are within a natural park and therefore the choice of the product was aimed at the non-use of water. Therefore, there were no infiltrations of resulting materials within the tough surfaces. On top of the uh, biocide treatment interventions, we also reinforced the tough surfaces. We have also uh, reinforced the surface with, with nano silicates, but also we reinforced the structure, especially on the access pillar of the structure, but also on the base part. Lastly, we have uh, given a lot of relevance to the cleaning of the floors of the tombs. Indeed, because over the years, a lot of uh, different materials built up and those materials hid the original forms of the tomb itself. We have started on the 13th of uh, September in uh, Naples talking about uh, complexity on the 31st, uh, we were in uh, Pompeii talking about uh, value in a very complex uh, and valuable archaeological site. Uh, we have passed two days in uh, Bali talking about heritage and sustainability, the future of our planet and the future of our history. We have seen uh, how in the Puglia region the, the restoration in the last 20, 20 years uh, have been carried out and how it can be an example of uh, best practices in, uh, in Italy dealing with restoration and in the partnership between the superintendency and uh, the private sector. Now today we are in uh, uh, Matera and I can say that uh, we are summarizing all the concepts that we have uh, uh, discuss about this week, uh, this week, complexity, value, and uh, today, ethic. We have, uh, this, have had the opportunity to discuss to, with uh, our colleagues, uh, partners, but let me say now friends, uh, and we will be friends forever because we, during this week, we have shared uh, a common uh, memory. We have not only worked, we've been to restaurants, uh, dancing uh, in uh, Puglia, talking, sharing our own experience, learning from uh, uh, each other. That's uh, the Restoration Weeks. That's the starting of all our, that have been the starting of all our projects in restoration abroad since 2006. Now we are very lucky that our Ministry of Foreign Affairs is supporting very hard uh, the restoration sector as an excellency to bring uh, to the knowledge of the world, to create new friendship uh, all over the world. So um, let me just say thank you very much to all of you, to our participants uh, in presence, to our guests uh, online which had, who had uh, the patience to follow us during all these uh, days. The next uh, appointment is the Restoration Week 2022. It will be spring, probably April, in uh, uh, Ferrara and follow us on uh, our website to get more information about our partner countries. You will find on the website uh, restorationweek.it all the information about every country that we have hosted here for the future collaboration. Let me make a specific thanks to all the countries present here, Albania, to the Vice Deputy Minister and the advisor of the minister being with us uh, all the time this uh, week to uh, Afghanistan uh, that we have just mentioned uh, in, in the last uh, as uh, an hope to Azerbaijan that we are 
uh, that we have met today and with, with uh, whom we are starting new cooperation. Let me thank Cuba, an example of uh, cooperation. The Ready Center in uh, Cuba has, uh, we hope, uh, uh, a first uh, spin-off, uh, but it is and it will be an example of uh, uh, long-lasting uh, cooperation. Croatia, we will start cooperating with Croatia in the early future, autumn. Um, let me thank uh, again Saudi Arabia uh, and uh, we, we, we have made uh, uh, a plan for uh, uh, the, the cooperation in uh, the country. Last but not least, uh, Lebanon, uh, we have met uh, uh, Sarkis Kuri, an old friend uh, and with uh, whom we are starting new cooperation. Again, last but not least, uh, Israel uh, for uh, real close uh, participation to the ex annual exhibition in uh, Tel Aviv. So I'm a little bit emotional, the, the week and a little bit tired, if I can say. So uh, the, the Restoration Week is always uh, uh, a great effort, but a great pleasure and uh, the, the, the starting point of uh, all the activities that Asso Restauro together with the Italian Trade Commission is planning for the next uh, year. So thank you at last to the Italian Trade uh, Agency, Roberto Rovato, Franca Innamorati and Emanuela Predisi for their support. Thank you to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to giving us the possibility to do this job and the future cooperation. Again, thank you to everyone. See you next year in Restoration Week 2021.